Good morning, everybody. My name is Marina Stedman, and I'm here to introduce the Introduction to Using Instagram Good Exchange webinar. So there's two presenters here today. So Marina Stedman, Head of Marketing at the Good Exchange, and I've also got Rasheen with me. Hello. So Rasheen's a client services and marketing assistant, and she's done a sterling job putting <laughs> together most of the content for this webinar. So we have got uh, an awful lot of content because Instagram is a quite a sophisticated application but we have tried to take it through on a step-by-step -step basis so we hope that uh, you'll be able to follow what we're doing so just before we get started it's recommended that attendees have or will be able to get administrator access to the charitable organization's Instagram account and if you want to link to your Facebook account you'll also need administrator access to your organization's Facebook account it would be good if you knew how to create and find content relevant to your charitable organization and for Instagram that's especially useful if you can do that on a mobile phone. If you don't have a Facebook account or page we do have an introduction to social media webinar which shows you how to create a Facebook account so if you want to learn how to do that you can watch that webinar and also if you want to know about all of our social media training and also platform training subscribe to our YouTube channel via the link below and you'll get um, updates on anything that we've done. Now, this is the agenda. So we're going to go through what is Instagram and why it's in, why you should use it. And also go through the differences between using Instagram on a PC and Instagram on a mobile device. And they are quite different. And there are more functionality on a mobile device than you have on a PC. But in addition to Facebook and Twitter, I guess, there's a lot more that you can do with Instagram on a mobile or you aren't able to do on a PC. And then Rasheen will take you through how to set up an Instagram account from your, through your, for your organization, which again is a bit different to having an individual Instagram account. So if you've got an Instagram account, you might be familiar with it, but here you'll need to set up a business account for your organization. Then we'll talk you through the Instagram home screen, show you how to find and follow relevant accounts to start building up your Instagram activity. Talk about hashtagging on Instagram, which in a way is more important on Instagram than it is on Facebook and Twitter. It seems to be driven on hashtags. And one of the reasons for that is that hashtags are searchable. Then through how to create content on Instagram and then posting photos, videos, Instagram stories and Instagram live. And then a quick summary of using Instagram via Hootsuite. So what is Instagram? So it's, it's a photo and video sharing social networking app. And actually some, something that a lot of people don't know is Instagram is now owned by Facebook. It allows you to upload pictures and videos and you can edit them with filters, organize them with tags and location information and also add and share them with your followers and with people who know you. So the idea of Instagram is then to interact with other users by following them, commenting on their posts, liking them, tagging them and messaging them. Instagram is free and the way that Facebook makes money from Instagram is by charging people to advertise. So you might see if you're a personal Instagram user that increasingly you're getting adverts for things you can buy in your Instagram feed. So I've put here a list of terms of things you'll hear us talking about in the webinar and that some of the terms are quite specific to Instagram, so it's quite good to know them. So your biography, I think that's pretty standard. It's a description of what your organization does. So if you've got Facebook or Twitter, it's very similar. But on Instagram, it's the only place where you can put links, for example. So it's important in your Instagram biography to put in the right link, but also to have a good description of what your organization does. So if anyone searches for your organization or organizations like yours, that you're easily found through your biography. A caption is what goes with the picture. So if you think about Instagram, it was originally designed just to be a photo app. Whereas you, so you add the caption now to describe or explain about the photo or the video that you've posted. So in a caption, you can include text, emojis, hashtags, and tags. You might hear the word explore used in Instagram, but really it's just another way of describing search. Filtering is an editing feature. If you think that Instagram is a photo app, it's just a way of making your photos look different. So you can put them in black and white or other things like that. 
followers and following very similar to I guess Twitter and Facebook so followers are people that are following an Instagram account so your account for example and following are users that you're following or your account is following your gallery is a collection of your posts i.e. your photos so if you look at a gallery first of all you just see photos and you probably think what's happened to all my words and you have to click on the photo in the gallery to see the words that you've written underneath i.e. your captions Hashtags, very similar to hashtags in Twitter and Facebook, if you're familiar with those, you put them in front of a keyword. They can be keywords or phrases which are relevant to the post. But the main difference, I think, is hashtags are, are one of the key things you can search for on Instagram. And we've got a whole section on hashtags because they're very important to how you're found and how, how you're sort of categorized. The heart icon, again, very familiar to Facebook, is how you like things on Instagram and see things that you've posted that people have liked. Highlights are stories or Instagram live videos that you can highlight on your profile. So when we get to stories, you'll see that they only appear for 24 hours. So highlights quite a new thing where you can pick stories and videos you want to keep and put them on your profile and they'll appear below your biography. Home screen, very similar. It's a list of activity of all the users you follow. You can also hear it termed the feed. And your Instagram handle is your username. Instagram Live is where you can broadcast live to your followers. So it's something that you can do via Instagram Stories. And if you attended our Facebook video, we talked about Facebook Live. Instagram Live is very similar. Instagram TV, again, quite a new thing. It's, I guess it's taking on YouTube because in Instagram TV, you can share and view video content, which is up to an hour long. So your post is where you put your video or image content, your profile, again very similar to Facebook, is your name, your username, your biography, your photo gallery, your stories, which we, I mentioned previously. It's like a sequential feed of what's going on at that time. And you can actually add to an Instagram story, but an Instagram story is only viewable by others for 24 hours. And if you're familiar with Instagram, it's things that are along the top. So you see someone's profile picture in, in a circle and you click on it and you can see their Instagram story and you can track them throughout a 24 hour period. Tagging, again, very similar to Facebook and Twitter is what you use to link people or organizations to a post. So they'll be notified or identified and verified, probably not something that any of us will be doing. If you're a very famous person or a brand, a global brand, you can have your account verified by Instagram, but I don't think many people take much notice of verified account. Okay, so why is Instagram important? So you can see from this screen, more than a billion people worldwide use Instagram every month. 63% log in at least once a day. It's the one, two, three, four, fifth most used active social media platform in the UK, actually, with 47% uh, of the population using it. The average user spends 28 minutes a day on the app. 11% shop on Instagram. And as I said, you'll see increasingly in your feed adverts for things you can buy. And that's, it's increasingly becoming a way of buying things. So Instagram users in the UK, 35% of the UK population using Instagram, slightly more women than men. And you can see here, if you're targeting a particular age group with your charitable organisation, there's obviously a peak here with younger people. So if you're targeting this sort of age group, Instagram is a good social media platform to use. As I mentioned earlier, there are significant differences between using Instagram on a PC versus Instagram on a mobile device. So on a PC you can post and like and find, but you can't message people, you can't upload pictures and videos, and you can't look at insights. So insights is a reporting where you can look at what's happening and how successful your posts are, which we'll touch very briefly later. So as you can see, Facebook is trying to force you to use Instagram on a mobile phone rather than on on a laptop. So I'm going to hand over to Rasheen, who's going to talk you through how to create your Instagram account. Thank you, Marina. Um, so yeah, I'm going to talk you through the two ways to um, 
create an Instagram account. So you can do it on a PC and a mobile device. So I'm going to talk about how to do it on the desktop first. So first of all, what you need to do is go to the Instagram homepage. So if you go to this link that we've put in the um, slides here, and this will take you to a page um, that you can see here. So again, there's two ways to create an Instagram account. So you can either enter a mobile or email in and enter a name and password and click next. And you can also log in with Facebook. Now I'm gonna come back to this later on and I'm just gonna talk you through how you would set up um, doing it this way first, entering a mobile number or email. So as you can see here, I've put in my email address, my um, name, and then a username. So if you put in your username, so I've um, created a test account here of Sheen Evans underscore the good exchange, um, a little tick will appear here. If the username is already in use, um, then this tick won't appear and you'll have to just keep trying different variations of your username. Um, so it's important to note here that if you're creating um, an Instagram account for your organization, um, then you'd want to put in your organization name here. So um, our Instagram handle is The Good Exchange. So once you click next, then you'll get a little pop up um, just stating that you're 18 years or older. Um, so if you just click um, 18. And it's as simple as that, really. So this is your created Instagram account. Now I'm going to come on to a little bit later on in terms of editing your profile um, and setting it up, but I'm going to first talk you through how to create an Instagram account on the mobile. So what you're going to need to do to create an Instagram account on the mobile is go to your app store. So depending on if you've got an Android or a, an iPhone, um, find your app store and then type in Instagram. Um, remember, Instagram's a free app, so you won't need to purchase anything. So if you type in Instagram, you'll find the Instagram logo. It looks like this, and then you can click install. So this looks very similar to what you see on the desktop. So you basically follow the same um, process as before. Enter in a mobile number, email, your name, your username and password, and click next or you have the option to log in with Facebook. So if you'd like to connect your Facebook account, then click Login with Facebook. And then this will prompt you to log into your Facebook account. So if you just enter in your, again, mobile number or email that's associated with your Facebook account and your Facebook password, and then click Login. So then a little pop-up will come, um, come up saying to connect your Instagram account, so just click continue as and then here you go you've now created your Instagram account so it's quite a simple process um, quite similar on the desktop or mobile um, in terms of creating an account so um, you can just pick what's best for you so now I'm going to talk you through setting up your Instagram profile and again I'll start off with how to do this on a desktop first so this is the home page um, once you've created your Instagram account and you go to edit profile and in this, this is where you can edit your username, link to your website and add in your bio. The little settings cog, this is where you're able to log out of your Instagram account, change your password, report any issues and also view your notifications. So there's a few things that Instagram do. So once you first create your account, they'll prompt you the few things that you need to do. So as you can see here, you can connect to your Facebook if you haven't already. You can add a phone number. Um, so again, bear in mind if you're creating this for your organization, then you'd want to um, perhaps add this and also add a profile. So, so, so while you're going through this, machine, <coughs> we just had a question. If you already have a personal account, how do you add a, add a charity account? Machine's going to talk me through how to add a charity account and then convert that into a business account. So yes. They're two separate accounts. Yeah, so if you've already got an Instagram account, so I have, for example, my own personal account, that's for personal use. So if you're looking to have an Instagram account for your charity, you need to create a completely new profile. And then within that, I'll talk you through how you then change that profile from a personal um, profile into a business account. So if you've already got an account for yourself, then keep that completely separate. Um, 
it's, it's, so it's dissimilar to Facebook in the sense that in Facebook, I can manage the Good Exchange page from my personal account. You can't do that on Instagram. So you need to create a completely separate um, account for your organization. Okay, so let's go into edit profile. So as you can see in here, it gives you a couple of options. So click change profile photo to um, add a profile photo. Here you can create a username, you can edit a username. Um, if you want to change this username and this message appears, this username isn't available, to, please try another. Um, that means that that username's in use. So you might just need to have a little play around. Um, you can add in things like underscores or a number or editing the name of it just to make sure that um, it's not in use because Instagram only allows um, one name to be in use at one time. And you can also link to your organization's website here and then fill in your bio, which is information about either yourself, if it's a personal account or your organization. And please note within this that you have 150 character limit for your bio. So it's best just to try and make it um, as short and snippy as possible. So I've just pulled up an example from Macmillan Cancer Care. So you can see here that this is their username. This is their bio. So they've got whatever cancer throws your way. We're right here with you to offer physical, financial and emotional support. So it's really clear. Um, simple, you know, tells you what the organization does straight away. And then you can see that this links to their website. Okay, so I'll go through quickly how to edit on your um, mobile phone. So it's similar, go to edit profile, it just looks a little bit different. Obviously, it's a little bit smaller on the mobile, but same process in terms of clicking edit profile. And then to change the profile photo, again, click edit, add or edit profile photo, you can add, change the username, website and bio. So if you click change profile photo, so this is slightly different to on the desktop and I'll tell you why in a second. So if you click through to change your profile photo and then you can select a new profile photo or import on Facebook. So bear in mind, if you've connected your Facebook account and you import from Facebook, that's actually going to pull your personal Facebook account. So I wouldn't advise doing this way. I would just add a new profile photo and generally um, you can put your company logo in there. So then once you've clicked through to that, um, you can go to your gallery. Um, so what you'd need to do is make sure that you have the photo that you want to upload stored from your phone. So select the photo that you wish to upload. And what you can do, you can reposition the photo. So just by holding over it, you can drag it left to right, up and down, just to make sure that it's all centered. So this is what's different on the mobile, is that you can add filters. I wouldn't suggest really doing this for your profile photo, but I just wanted to show you in case you came to and didn't know what it was. So filters are an editing feature on Instagram and you can use them to enhance the colors, the brightness. Um, so it's a, really, it's a really handy tool for you to be able to use. And what you do is you just scroll across um, and it'll apply different filters that will have different lighting effects on them. So when you're happy with your photo, um, click next. And as you can see now, that has pulled through to my profile. So you can see here, we've got the profile picture, the name, our bios, we've got the Good Exchange as a not-for-profit online matching platform within the charitable sector. And then we've also got our website. Okay, so once you've all set up your profile, the next, next thing that you want to do is switch over from a personal account to a business account. So I'm just gonna talk through the difference. Um, so the main thing, the three things that you get then is you can do Instagram ads. So the ability to make ads and hit your target audience. You have a contact button with the um, option to provide your contact information and you can add a mobile number where people will be able to click on that and directly be able to call you from it. And then you also have analytics, um, which is called insights in Instagram. And this gives you the opportunity to track engagement with your followers. So bear in mind, you can only switch from a personal account to a business account via the mobile app. Okay. so. What you need to do in the right hand corner, top right hand corner of the screen is a little bigger um, bar icon. So if you click that, this will take you through to this page. 
And then if you go to the bottom of the page, click settings and then click account. And then right at the bottom of the page, highlighted in blue writing, you can see switch to a professional account. If you click that and then what you'd need to do is um, click business, ignore this creator. This is for public figures, um, influencers, artists, people that would look to be getting verified. So what you need to do is look at um, the business and then click continue. Okay, so the next thing you need to do then is select a category. Um, so what you do in this search bar is you type in um, your category. So for all of you it would be charity organization. And then once you've done that, a little um, green tick will appear to, and the Instagram's telling you that category is fine to select. And then you click next. The next thing I'll prompt you to do then is enter your organization's address. So type in your organization's address um, and postcode. And then click save. So this is a part where I'll let you review the info. So if you make any mistakes, don't worry. Um, you can go in and edit this. So this is the this is a test account that I created for the purpose of the webinar. So it's an email address. So there you might want to put your um, info up, for example, email or whatever email address you put people um, you put out for people to contact you, and then the number of the business, and then you've got the location there. So once you've reviewed your details, click save. And this is the part where you can connect your Facebook page. So um, you can only do this if you've actually got an organization Facebook page. So if you have, then um, you can go through and, and click this arrow here. If you haven't, then just simply click don't connect to Facebook now. And then you can do this at a later date. So if you haven't got the details, don't worry, you can always go back and do that. Um, so once you click that arrow, it will, similar in the sense that if you, at the beginning of the process, if you've done this already, just put in your email address and password and then log in. Again, click continue as regime. And then this is the part where you need to connect the Facebook page. So click the one that's relevant. If you're a manager of a couple of pages, just make sure that you're connecting the correct page, the correct Instagram account, and then click done. So as you can see here now, all the details are here. Um, and this is now, it doesn't look too different to the personal account, except the fact that you've got the promotions here. And then now you've got the ability um, for the insights and you've also got the contact info as well. As you can see, now you've connected the, the Facebook account, you can also open to Facebook. And this becomes really useful um, at a later date when we show you how to post, that you can actually share posts that you post on Instagram to Facebook as well. Okay, so I'll pass you over to Marina who will talk you through your Instagram home screen. Thanks, Rasheen. So Rasheen's showing you how to set it up. And I'm just going to show you what it looks like when it's all done and all filled in. So this is the Good Exchanges Instagram page. We've, we've only been using Instagram for a few months, so we're, we're actually building up our profile at the moment. And your profile, as we said, is the hub where all your photos and videos or everything are there. And you can view all the pictures you've shared the people throwing. And as I mentioned, it looks like a sort of photo album and then sometimes you look at it and think, oh, what's happened to all the words I've written? So if you just click on any of the photos, you can then, it opens up and you can see the words. So as Rasheen said, there's the profile photo. If you want to edit your profile at all, you just click on that button at the top. Now, I mentioned in the glossary, explore is what Instagram calls search. So if you click on that, I guess it's a compass or something, it goes to the page where you can search and explore for posts from users you don't follow and it gives you access to the search bar. So if you want to find, and we'll talk about this a bit later, organizations to follow or people to follow for your charitable organization that are relevant, then you click on that explore icon. As I mentioned, the feed heart icon, you can click on that and see all the posts and likes on your posts by friends and followers, all the mentions, tags, comments, new followers, etc. So you can see here, we've got a list of people who started following us. And if I scroll down, it would show me people who'd liked things. So here is the details of the posts we've done, the followers we've got and who we're following. So you can see I've clicked on following and we've got 120 organizations following us and this is who they are. And if I want to go back to my profile page at any time after I've clicked off, I just click on the little face or person icon and that takes me to there. So if I want to see the content of my posts, I click on the post icon and, and it's represented by that sort of square thing. So if you see that square sign anyway, you can click on it and it will show you your posts. So 
the next bit I'm going to go into is some of these things. So I mentioned Instagram TV. If you click on the word Instagram TV, it'll take you to your videos that you've uploaded via Instagram TV that can be up to 60 minutes. So again, look for that sort of TV icon on the phone, you'll see it at the top. And you can either use that to access your Instagram TV or look at other things that people have posted. If you click on saved, now this is a private icon. If you, if you personally want to save something you like to go and look back at, then you can click on that and save something. And then if you, anywhere you see this little icon, you, it, well, you can go to the things that you save, but no one else on your account or no one public can see what you've saved. And then tagged will show you the photos and videos that you've been tagged in. So if you want to see who's tagging you and what they're talking about, click on the tagged. So then as Rasheen mentioned, the cog thing takes you to your account settings. So you can see here, you can access from here other apps and websites that are using your account. So for example, I can see here that we've got Hootsuite where we've linked Hootsuite to our Instagram account. You can set your notifications. So Instagram belongs to Facebook. They want to send you lots of messages encouraging you to do advertising with them. If you click on notifications, you can set the permissions that you, whether you want Instagram to send you messages or not. Here under privacy and security is permissions for visibility of your account, who can make comments and how content can be shared. And this is security emails that you might have received from Instagram. So you, if you do have an Instagram account, you will get security emails about logins from new laptops or logins from new phones and things like that. And if you ever want to go back to your homepage at any time, just click on that icon at the top of your screen. Now on a phone, slightly different. So this is a mobile phone view. This is a good exchanges page or profile on a mobile phone. So some of the icons look the same. So the feed heart icon, for example, looks the same. The posts, followers and following this and the profile photo all look the same. There might be in different places. So the feed heart is down there, for example, but you can see the profile, the posts, followers and following. Some are in different places. And some of the things are completely different on the mobile app. So edit profile, you can see slightly different. It's in the middle, but it's quite clear what that is. Now, Rasheen mentioned the contact. So you can see here on the mobile view, if you, if you click on the contact, on the contact, it brings up this box. Now, if I tap on call there, it will automatically call the number that you put in when you set up your account so make sure you do put a telephone number that you want people to be able to call and then as Rasheen said you've got your email address so you can see we've got info at thegoodexchange.com there again as I mentioned on the desktop you've got the sort of square box if you click on that you can see all your posts and if I want to go back to the home page from the mobile I just click on the house whereas on the uh, desktop it was the top left hand corner the icon and the word Instagram so on the on the desktop again search and explore I had the compass well here I've just got a magnifying glass so slightly more obvious if I want to upload a photo or video on the mobile I just click on the plus box and it takes me to a place to upload photos or videos and again if I want to return to my profile I can click on the icon there so then if I want to access my settings i can click on the cog sign and i access that from the burger menu so you've got this thing with three things i suppose it looks like a burger and if you access that it will take you to your settings menu back up so just to let you know so that settings menu looks very similar to the settings menu i think that machine showed and again as i said if, I, if you click on the square there it'll take you into your posts that you've done and you can then look at what you've written so now you've got your account set up you can see how to navigate it you want to get some people that you want to follow. So again, it, it's a, Instagram operates very much in the same way that Twitter and Facebook do. It's all about finding people to follow and getting people to follow you so you can engage with the organizations and individuals that you want to support your charitable organization. So the way to find people to follow on Instagram, very similar. First of all, suggesting looking at organizations like yours and industry influencers in your industry. So use, if you're on the desktop, the search or explore option, search for organizations that are like yours, organizations that you work with, people that you work with, and industry influencers. So you can see here I search for Alzheimer's. You can see they've got 26,000 followers, so they're quite a good organization if, you know, for us, for a charitable organization like the Good Exchange to follow. 
You can also search for relevant hashtags and follow the accounts that are using the hashtags. And I'm going to talk through that in the next slides about how to search for hashtags and how to follow hashtags. Also, I talked previously about being able to look at your followers. So follow back your followers. So if you click on the followers, this is the desktop, this is the mobile, you can then see who you are following. But if you have this blue button, you can click on that and then you'll be following back people who are following you. And one suggestion is to write a post and post it saying, who, who are the best people to follow, say, in the charitable sector or in the charitable sector on the Isle of Wight or we're a charity supporting homeless people. Who do you recommend that we follow on Instagram? And, and, and a note on the bottom, you can allow Instagram to have access to your personal contacts list and follow them from Instagram, but it's probably more relevant for your personal Instagram account than your organisation's Instagram account because I don't suppose your organisation wants to follow all your personal friends and family that you've got on uh, in your personal contacts list. So hashtagging, as I mentioned before, hashtagging is, is one of the key features of Instagram that everybody uses. They're, they're similar on Instagram to the way that search engine keywords work on a website. And if you're interested in search engine keywords, we did a whole webinar Christmas about search engines and we've done a Google Analytics webinar as well that talks about search engine optimization. But they help to categorize posts on Instagram, for example, are people looking for content that they're interested in and increasing the reach of your content to people that don't know you. So you can add hashtags in the caption of a post or in the comments. So you can see here, this is the caption and these are comments. If you're adding a comment to a post, you can put hashtags in there. So they make your content easier to find. So the main thing to think about hashtags is in a, in a, Instagram post, you can search on a hashtag, but you can't search on the caption. So for example, all this stuff about being shortlisted and at the awards is not searchable, but the hashtag for charity and hashtags for awards are searchable. If your account is public, the post with the hashtag will be visible on the hashtag page. So you can see here that we've hashtagged hashtag TVBC awards. And if I click on that hashtag and go to the hashtag page, there is my post. And Instagram doesn't show all of them, it shows top or recent. So the important thing about hashtags is to make them relevant and also make sure they make sense as a word or phrase. You can see here you've got TVBC awards, you've got charity. So you can use letters, numbers and emojis, but you can't have any spaces. So think about what people are going to be looking for, you know, what's trending, what's popular, and, and use hashtags like that. You can link hashtags in your bio, but you can only put hashtags in your own posts or comments on someone else's posts. So as I said, make sure your hashtags are relevant. So you can see here, this is a post that I was writing and I've put hashtags in charity donation, charity fundraising, donate. And when I start typing, when you start typing in a hashtag, you can see what Instagram does is it brings up a list of hashtags that use that term. So I started typing in charitable, and I can see all the hashtags that, that are around on Instagram. And I can also see which ones are the most popular. So I can see charitable giving has got 29,000 posts. So I might want to use that in my post. But may, again, make sure that it's relevant to your brand. So look at what other charitable organizations like yours are doing. And you can search a keyword. And then you can look for top everything. So this is top hashtags and keywords and charities. You can look for top accounts or you can look for top tags. Also, look at your most successful posts. So if you go back to your profile on your phone and tap on the insights link, you can see which of your posts have been most successful and then look at the hashtags in them. You can also click on the explore search and if you select the tags icon or link, as I said there, you can see the top hashtags for that word charity. So again, it helps you to pick ones that are the most popular because the ones that are the most popular are ones that your potential target audience is looking for and it will come up most often and then you might be more, most likely to get your post seen in their feeds. So, so while a large number, one thing to bear in mind, it might mean that lots of people follow it and are using that hashtag, but if you pick a really, really big one and it's not really closely related to what you do, 
your post might get lost amongst the hundreds of thousands of other posts using that hashtag. So it is a bit of a balancing game. The other way to look at hashtags, again, type it up in the search and you can see on the mobile you get a list at the top and if you swipe along, what, what Instagram is doing is showing you other hashtags that are related to the one you typed in. So you might find other relevant hashtags that are closer to the one you typed in and use some of those instead and your post might stand out more. And the other tip, don't use exactly the same hashtags on each post. So don't copy and paste your hashtags because like any social media tool, Instagram's got algorithms and it doesn't like people that try and cheat the system or cheat. So also don't use hashtags that aren't relevant. It doesn't like it and your post will probably not be shown as often as they could be. So a question we get asked a lot, how many hashtags should I lose? If you, if you use Instagram a lot, you'll see a lot of people put a lot of hashtags. So I found a bit of research. So you, you can only include up to 30 hashtags on a post. And on a story, you can only put up to 10. If you move, use more than 30, your video or your comment won't be posted. So we'll let you do it, but it just won't post it. Now, if you look at this research, it looks like between 8 to 12 hashtags on a post seem to generate the most engagement. So you might try using 8 to 12 and see what happens. So if you want to tag a photo or a video, you just take or upload your photo or video that Rasheen mentioned earlier. And you just so I've got my photo there. So this is the one that I was posting yesterday on my phone. I had it on my phone, tapped on it, click on next. Again, you can choose to add your filter if you want. I can make it different color or black and white. Write your caption up here. When you've finished writing your caption, you put your hashtag in. So you put your hashtag in and you start typing. So I did charity donation, charity fundraising, and as I showed before, when I type in donate, I get a list. So I can just tap on any of these hashtags and they will appear in my caption. Now, if I type a, start typing a hashtag and it doesn't appear down here, it means that no one else is using it. So you can use it anyway. If you want, you might find that you put a hashtag in it becomes so popular that other people start following it and using it. But it does mean it's not being used at all. So when you're happy with your, com your comment, your caption, and your, all the hashtags you've got, click OK. And once you're happy with that, you just click on share and your post will immediately be published. And again, as Rasheen mentioned, you can see here I've got two accounts. I've got my own account and I've got the Good Exchange. So be careful to make sure which account you're posting to when you're posting a, a caption or a photo or video on your business's Instagram account. You can also follow hashtags on Instagram which will keep your account updated with topics your Instagram and you, or you're interested in. And you can also then see what's going on and look for new hashtags and things you might want to follow, people you might want to follow. So you can see here I've got an example of Alzheimer's research. And in here, they've got a hashtag dementia research. I can either search for something like dementia or Alzheimer's or I can look for an organization I'm following, see what they've hashtagged. And then I just have to click or tap on the hashtag in the post. And you can see here that by clicking or tapping on that hashtag, the Dementia Research hashtag page has opened. So if I now want to follow that Dementia Research hashtag, I just click on the follow button or tap on the follow button. And now I'm following the hashtag Dementia Research. So the hashtag will then appear in my list of things that I'm following. So you can see here that the Good Exchange is now following the hashtag Dementia Research and I can see its photos and videos appearing in my feed. So now I'm going to hand back to Rasheen who's going to talk about content. Yes, um, I'll start off with a few questions while Marina was speaking. So I'm just going to cover those quickly. Um, so we had a question about um, the tone uh, of what your pictures and captions should be for Instagram. So Instagram is a very visual place. So you need to make sure that your pictures are attention grabbing. And in terms of the captions, it's a fun place, Instagram. So don't be scared to use hashtags and emojis um, and make sure that you have a strong call to action. Um, I'll be covering this actually in this section. So I'll leave it brief and I'll go into more detail. Um, and then we had another question in regards to using capital letters or in hashtags. 
Um, it doesn't matter. You can use either. What my suggestion would be um, is look up the hashtag. And like Marina said, um, you can see um, how many users of that hashtag has been used. And then you can just use the most popular one um, or the one that's best for you. Um, so it doesn't really matter with capital letters. But or I not. wouldn't usually use all capital letters because mm, it's no. your shouting. Yeah. Yeah. So in the example, someone said they've got charity fundraising and they're wondering whether they should have a capital letter for C charity or F fundraising or just all lowercase. In that instance, that would be fine. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't suggest using all capital letters. But when you're searching, it find, would it find them all? Yeah, capital letters or not? Yeah, I believe so. Yeah, yeah. I'll have to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it, it, it's not case sensitive. Does it? No, so um, don't worry about that. So yes, right, creating content for Instagram. So I'm just going to briefly talk through Canva. Uh, we actually have a Canva webinar um, that you can go back and look into in more detail. But I just wanted to run through this quickly um, as Canva is a great tool um, to create good images. And obviously as Instagram is, is a um, image-based app, that, that's something that you really need to be able to do is create uh, attention-grabbing images. So if you go to Canva and then create a design, and then what you need to do is just type in Instagram. So this will pull up the dimensions that you need for an Instagram post. Um, and this is um, 1080 by 1080. So just select that. Um, and as you can see, this will pull up the relevant canvas that you need. And then what you need to do is click on elements in this bar on the left hand side, and then click on grids. This will then allow you to upload an image into the grid. So you can select your image here, or you have the other options to use photos that Canva has. Um, Canva actually have really good photos. I actually use them quite a lot. So um, if you're tight on images, then you can use um, photos and just type in a relevant um, term and this will pull up a range of images that you can use or you also have the option to use a template that Canva have so it's up to you what way you want to go about it you can just interchange between these and um, different ways of doing it if you'd like so as you can see here that's pulled the image across um, and then the next thing that you need to do is click download here and then click download again. So I've just covered that really, really briefly. We've co covered it a couple of times if you've attended our previous webinars and we have got this in more detail. Um, so you can go to our um, webinar recording pages and look at this in more detail should you wish to. So now I'm going to cover posting on Instagram and this is how you post either a photo or a video on Instagram. So you follow the same process. So remember that you can only post um, on Instagram via your mobile app, or you can schedule posts through Hootsuite. We'll be covering that, um, covering posting on Hootsuite a little bit later. So you need to go launch the Instagram mobile app, and then you can click this little cross icon here. That will take you through to your gallery. Click picture of the video they'd like to upload. You can also have the option to upload multiple photos and videos. So if you click this icon here, this will allow you to select multiple videos. And I believe it's up to eight that you can upload. So once you're happy um, with how many that you're having, or you can just stick to the, the one, then click next in the right hand corner. So now we come to the filters. So I briefly covered this earlier when we were setting up the profile photo. Um, so I believe you'd use this more here. So you have the option to select a filter. So to change which filter you'd like, just simply scroll across here and you can just see, so as you can see here, that's a little bit darker, that's black and white, that's made the colors more vibrant. So um, this is particularly good if, you, if you've got pictures of people, um, say a photo is a little bit dark, um, it's really great just to be able to edit straight on the app. Um, it's quite simple to do. So we're going to stick to the normal filter. You can further edit your photo by clicking this edit icon here. So this gives you further editing features such as contrast, brightness, you can adjust the way that the picture um, fits in the screen and the structure. Um, the best thing to do here, I suggest, is just having a go yourself, just clicking the button, seeing what you can do. 
Um, I'm going to show you an example of adjusting the brightness. So if you click the brightness icon, you'll get a little um, bar here. And then what you do is you just drag this up and down and that will adjust the brightness um, of the picture. So once you're happy, you can click done. And then you click next in the right hand corner. So this is the part then where you're going to add your caption and um, you can also tag people and add a location. So if you're going to tag people, this will kind of cover the caption. Marie has talked about it briefly in terms of the hashtags that you can use. Um, but really the caption is to use to describe the photo. Um, so what's going on in it. So this is just, I've just pulled a basic photo. So this could be, um, we could write something to advertise a certain charity week or something like that. But if you had a fundraising event, for example, and had a picture of all your fundraisers, you might want to um, describe that and say something like, oh, you know, we were fundraising today or come down, um, that kind of thing. And then just make sure that you're adding in your hashtags um, as Marina covered earlier. You might also want to tag people, so you can tag if you, for example, had a picture of everyone that worked there, you could tag, if you had them on your Instagram, tag them. If you had a relevant organisation, um, you could tag them. So to do that, just click the tag people, search for the user, um, it, to bear in mind that you have to be following them to be able to search for them, and then, as you can see, the tag works there. So if you click the arrow, when you're happy, the tag has worked, just make sure that once you've put the tag in, it appears here in a little black box, that means the tag has actually worked. Um, and then when you're happy with that, you can click the little blue tick in the right hand corner. So we've, here's an example that I've done. So um, would you like to keep up to date with what's happening in the charitable sector? Then subscribe to our YouTube channel series. Click the link in our bio to subscribe. So this is something that's really important. I just want to pay attention to this bit here. Is that on Instagram, you can't add in links, um, clickable links anyway, the same way you can do in Facebook and Twitter posts. So generally what people do in Instagram is you direct people to the link in your bio. So what you need to pay attention here as well is that what you're asking people to click the link to is actually relevant to the post. Um, so it's worth just double checking what you've um, put in your bio. So as you can see here, um, the tag has worked. You can also add a location should you wish. So to add a location, what you need to do is just type in the location. It's pretty straightforward click the location that you wish and you can see that it's appeared here. So you might want to do that an example again, if you were holding a particular fundraising event in a location, you might want to um, put that location in to let your followers know where you're holding that event. So while you're on that bit, you yeah. had a question actually about Facebook and Instagram. Mm. If you connect to Facebook and do you have to add content to Instagram to upload to Facebook or does it work the other way too? You can see here that what Rasheen's got is when you're posting that post, you have an option if you've connected the two yeah. accounts to post it to yeah. Facebook at the same time. Yeah. And it's the same way when you're posting on Facebook, it will ask you if you've connected them, if you want to post to Instagram. So it saves you time. The other way to do that is to use a tool like Hootsuite that yeah. Rasheen mentioned. And um, we ran a webinar on that before Christmas where you can schedule all your posts to all your social media accounts yeah in one go exactly um the thing to be bear in mind here what i would say is that because of the difference between instagram in terms of using the links so this post here because i've said to click to link in the bio i wouldn't then want to post that to facebook because that's not going to make sense to the users and especially on facebook if you can put a link that's better so Absolutely, if it's relevant, if the post makes sense, you can post it straight to Facebook, um, but it's not that you have to. And so I would take that on a case by case basis and just double check what you've actually got in your caption um, and make sure that that would be fine for your Facebook users to wow. see it. So while we're on questions, we've had a few more questions. So mm -hmm. Are we best to use a generic mm -hmm. profile image or our logo? So the thing I would think about is if you look at your profile image on your phone, it is a tiny little circle. So if you've got a photo, 
you might find it doesn't look great on your on a mobile. A lot of people use for organisations use a, a logo because it's much easier to see. So you could try it if you've got a photo you think might show a good representation of your organisation, but it, it might not look very good on a mobile. Marina's point that being very small, if you've got pictures of people, is that going to really, for a period of scrolling through a feed, are they really going to know, oh yeah, I know who, who that is? Whereas a logo makes it very clear who that organisation is. So um, I would suggest keeping with a logo that clear. The basic tips on an Instagram strategy. So we started with Twitter and Facebook. Yeah. And we only started using Instagram recently mm. because to use Instagram, you have to have access to a lot of photos and images because it's an image tool. And, and, and it's only been recently, I guess, that we've had more content where we've had mm. photos and images that we could use. And, and also using a tool like Hootsuite has made it a lot easier for us because we're a very small team yeah. to be able to add another social media app to our uh, armory without causing loads of extra work yeah because although as Rasheen said what what you write is slightly different the the photos and videos you use can be the same the basic messaging can be the same but on Twitter you have to stick to the 280 characters mm. on Facebook you can put more yeah Facebook you can put links but Instagram you can't so we we, we use a basic I guess principle now and we use a tool to help us manage it so I guess I would say it depends who your audience is mm. so we're finding that our the users of the good exchange platform a lot of them are using Instagram so we felt that it would be good for us to have Instagram so we can interact with them and they can interact with us so mm. look at who you're targeting do they use Instagram and how do they use it and I guess go back to the searching and followers have a do a little bit of research mm. on your target audience and see not just Instagram but I guess see which social media platforms they're using mm. and then if you can only do one or two then start with those and once you're proficient with those then look at adding another one so another question do we recommend Hootsuite over other scheduling plans well we use Hootsuite and we get a 50% discount because we're a charitable organization I guess there are other ones that are okay so you've covered that caption tag and then you can link to your other social media networks so if you're happy click share so as you can see I've clicked share this photo has now appeared in um, my profile so here you go you can see it in the gallery that's where the picture has okay so Tips on writing a good caption. So you need to keep your caption brief. You only have 2,220 2, characters available. And your caption should pro provide context for the photography and show your brand personality. So you need to tell, you, basically the caption is telling your followers what's going on in the picture. So the thing to remember on Instagram is that it only shows the first few words of your caption in the newsfeed. So it's really good to start with a question or a call to action, as this is more likely to catch your audience's eye and make them want to click on the show more button. And the show more button then will show your full caption. So you really want to try, try and put something out there that's going to you know, grab the attention of your followers. Um, yeah, we've covered this. So when you're using call to action, make sure that you link to your bio. So you also really want to, you know, interact with your followers and encourage people to write comments and tag. So I'll show you an example in the next slide of an organization doing this. Use relevant hashtags and again, use emojis. So Instagram is really a place for informal communication. It's a fun, it's a fun app. Um, it's expressive. So you really want to use um, emojis. You can show your mood, you can show brand personality. Um, you can also highlight key points in your message, um, and we'll show you an example. So this is an example of um, Macmillan Cancer Care. It's a very simple photo, cancer is dot, dot, dot. And you can see here that they've asked their followers to fill in the blank. So this is really them um, engaging a conversation and facilitating conversation with their um, followers. So it's something simple yet very effective. And as you can see here, they use a pencil emoji um, to highlight again what their message is and what they're trying to get you to do. Um, so another one here um, from Macmilla Cancer. So here this time they've used a, um, a question. They've had a, they've used a, 
heart emoji, which is on brand with the um, brand colors. They've used green. They've got a call to action here. So they're asking people to sign up. And they've stated where they can sign up by clicking the link in the bio. Okay, Instagram stories. So Instagram stories is a feature that allows us users to post videos and photos in a sequential feed, which each post will be accessible by others for 24 hours each. So I'm gonna talk you through how you would create an Instagram story. So you need to go to your account. And what you do, you click on this little cross, the blue, um, blue background, and this will take you to a page here. So here you can swipe um, across and this will give you different options. Um, again, I will just go on and have a little play around what you can do. So we're currently on the create one, which allows you to type messages with a background. Um, the normal one is what I would suggest. And then you can use this, um, click to this little icon here, and that will take you to your phone gallery where you can upload a picture or a video. So as you can see here, it's taken me through to my gallery. I'm going to select the photo that I wish to upload to my story. And as you can see, that it's appeared here. Now, as you can see, this is on a slant. So on Instagram, what you can do is you can hover over the image and you can change the size of it, the, um, the way that it's featured, you can turn it left and right. So again, the best thing for you guys to do is just to go on this and have a play around and see what different things you can do. So as you can see, you've got a bar here on the top, top of the page, and this allows you to do a um, variety of things. So the first thing I'll talk you through is you can add writing. So if you click that little AA button, and then you can just begin to um, type in whatever text that you'd like. If you click this, this will alter the font of your um, writing. So I think there's about five or, um, five or six different fonts that you can use on Instagram. And by clicking on that, you can see this has now changed to modern. And you can see that the um, writing has um, changed here. You can also alter the color of the text. So simply just by clicking um, which color that you'd like. Bear in mind um, what color you're using and how that's going to appear against the photo. So you can see here I've selected the pink one that has now changed over here. So when you're happy, then you can click done and that will um, pull through to your picture. So I've changed this back to white as like I said, what you need to be um, careful of is when you're pick picking the different colors, how that's going to appear against your um, writing. And again, you can move the writing around the screen. So by selecting it and dragging it around the screen, you can move it around. So um, this icon, that arrow, sorry, is meant to be over here. So that is allows you to draw of your image. Um, I don't particularly use this often, but it is there. So I thought I would just show you. It's a little pen, essentially, and you can just draw lines. Um, I don't particularly use it, but... I think it looks a little bit messy, um, but you can use that, have a play around. There's different um, varieties of pens that you can use. Um, so you can just have, select these on the top and then click. Um, yeah, so you can select the different pens and then also um, the color as well. So similar to the writing, um, you, you can edit that. So I've taken that off because I didn't like the way that it looked particularly. So, um, but that is the option there. So I thought I'd just cover that briefly. So the third thing you can do um, is select this smiley face. And when you select that smiley face, it'll bring up a lot of extra features that you can add to your post. So as you can see here, there's quite a lot of things. Um, and if you actually scroll up, this will bring up, there's a lot more um, below here, but I can't show you. Um, but yeah, there's a lot more options if you scroll up. So I'll talk you through just a few things. So hashtag, so you can actually hashtag on Instagram stories. Um, so that's quite a um, relatively new feature, but one that's quite good. You could create a poll. Um, so ask your users a certain question, similar in the sense that you can do on Facebook. Um, and you can search gifts. So I've added, this is actually a GIF. Uh, this actually fl um, flashes different colors for donate, um, but you can't, you can't see it as it's a picture. 
Well, I've also added a um, hashtag here. So really, this is a really good icon to click on and have a play around. It just, it's just a way of making your image, your story just eye-catching. Um, but yeah, again, just go in and have a little play, see what's there. Um, you can sort of play with it and see what you'd like. So importantly, if you've put anything there, this is something that I'll do quite a lot is I'll I'll put different GIFs and images on and just see the way it looks. But if you'd like to delete anything, then what you need to do is that you need to hover over the thing that you'd like to delete. And then when you hover over it, this little bin will appear at the bottom of the page. So simply just drag and drop that into the little bin. And you can see now that's disappeared from there. So don't worry if you put something on there that you don't like, um, then you can just drag and drop that. So a question we've had is when should you use an Instagram story? So I think when, when you're doing, usually when you're yeah. doing something, so people use them when they're at events, when they're out, when something's happening, something that your followers would want to see, but that is going on on a sort of ongoing 24 hour basis. <laughs> Yeah, I think you can use them. I think definitely for fundraising events and things like that, they're brilliant for. And what you can also do is um, you could use them as a way of advertising a fundraising event beforehand. So you could do a post saying, did you know we're doing a fundraising event? Um, and then do posts relating to that. Um, and then what you can do is add that to your highlights. And we're going to cover that in a little bit more detail later on. Um, but definitely pre and post advertising, um, fundraising events. And we're going to cover doing Instagram Live, which is another thing that I would suggest doing if you are holding any sort of events. But it's not something that I was just using all the time um, because it becomes sort of irrelevant. And then if you're constantly posting Instagram stories, that's not something new then to your followers. It's something that you'd use almost sparingly um, as your followers will actually get notified when you post a story. So it's, you know, it's an excitement thing. Oh, they post a story. I wonder what they're doing. So if you, if you do, do it too much, then it won't become interesting anymore. So, um, yeah, I only do it with something exciting to shout about, really. And you can't put links in Instagram stories, can you? No. No. So you'd have to say link in the bio, um, similar to the way that you post. Okay, so then send to, and then you click share to your story. So send to your story, share. So there's a way as well that you can share to Facebook. Um, so this will appear in your Facebook story. So it's up to you whether you'd like to do this or not. Um, you have the option there. So as you can see now, I posted a story and now on my profile picture that has appeared with a multicolored ring. So that's how you know and how your followers will know that you currently have an Instagram story live. Okay, Instagram highlights. So basically this is a way um, that you can save your Instagram stories permanently on your page. As we said previously, Instagram stories are only up for 24 hours. So Instagram highlights are a way of saving those stories for, um, well, until you delete them, they're up yet there until um, you choose if you choose to delete them. Um, so I've taken an example from Cancer Research UK. Um, so they've got a few highlights. So they've got a new section, which basically um, is just information about their organisation and health. This is basically um, they had health tips up there. So you can have a little check around um when you're thinking about instagram the best thing to do is just find an organization that's similar to you and see what they're doing and what they're finding works for them so you can just do a little bit of research around that um so yeah by selecting the highlight you'll be taken to the instagram story so if you'd like to add your story to your highlight click on your story and just click the highlight button there so you need to name your highlight um so just put in whatever that you'd like um, and then click add. So you'll get a no notification then just saying that it's been added to your highlight and then simply click done. As you can see here, the highlight has now appeared underneath um, the edit profile button. Yeah, so it's just important to remember that your highlights will now stay there until you move them. Just don't put them up for any reason, but when you are putting them up, you can also take them down. So if you have other content that's more relevant, then you can just change them. Cancer Research UK had five, I think, 
Um, so yeah, I just go on other profiles and have a look around and see what, what they're doing. Um, so I'm going to Koa Instagram Live, which is similar to Facebook Live. So basically it's the broadcasting um, feature you can use to stream live videos to your users. Um, so when you do this, I bring highlights around the profile picture and it will also alert your followers that you're currently doing a live stream. So to do a live stream, go back to your homepage and you click the blue um, cross as you would have done for the Instagram stories. And basically what you need to do is scroll across until you get to live here. And when you get to this button, make sure that you double tap it. That actually caught me out when I was doing this. I thought you just held it down. But if you double tap the button, that will then let you go live on Instagram and you'll get this notification saying that you're live. You can flip the camera. Um, so if you want to do a broadcasting with your talking, so you'd want the camera on yourself, or if you're filming other people, you can have it facing outwards. Um, people that I've seen being successful on Instagram Live have done quite a lot of promotion beforehand yeah. to their followers to say that they're going to be live. So typically they're going to be doing something like an event. And they're, for the few yeah. days beforehand, they're doing Instagram stories and posts saying, we're going to be live at 2 o'clock on Thursday. Yeah. So be ready to watch us because otherwise people won't know that you're going to be live yeah. and they won't sign on and look at you. And it's important to know what you're going to be doing when you do a live story. So um, a lot of people, for example, will say we're going to be live and we're going to be discussing this topic. So then you have two people um, or person talking into the camera discussing a topic and then what people do is when they come onto the live stream, they will then message and ask questions, which I'll cover um, in a second. Um, so it's basically an option for you to facilitate conversation with your followers. Um, so definitely make sure that you have an idea of what you're actually going to be going live with. Um, so that you know um, what the conversation um, is going to be about. So I've just done an example um, of us going live. So when you know that you're actually live, you'll get this little live icon in the top left hand corner. And this is where any comments um, from your um, followers will appear. So what typically people will do when they have a live story for having a particular conversation about something, people will ask a question and then they'll talk into the camera saying, so-and-so has asked this and talk around that. So um, comments will appear, they'll run up the page up this way here. Um, so you also have the option to send a direct message to someone to so say, you were doing an Instagram live and someone asked you a question that you wanted to actually private message them about. Um, click this icon here, you can find the person um, and write the message, find the person and click send. You also have the option to tell people, tell followers that you're live. Um, so this is quite important in order to gauge activity. So it's quite similar um, to sending a message. Click the smiley face icon, then go to send to, write your message and then click send. So it's, it's quite similar. To end if they, um, the Instagram Live, just click end at the top right hand corner. Instagram will ask you, are you sure? So click yes and video. And there's the option then here as well. You can either share the live stream to your story, which means that people will be able to go back and um, view it. And bear in mind that will sit for 24 hours or you can delete the video. So it's dependent on what you want to do with that. Okay, so on the final bit now. So if, if you didn't attend our Hootsuite webinar, then we just wanted to do a quick summary. So if you're not using Hootsuite, you're not planning to use Hootsuite and you do have to go, then we fully understand. Mm. This is a, a Hootsuite screen. So if you haven't got your Instagram stream in Hootsuite, you have to add it in first. So first of all, you need to log into Hootsuite and click on add a social network. So then you need to say, I want to connect my Instagram account and you have to allow Hootsuite to access your Instagram account. So I don't know if you remember back at the beginning when we had a message that said when you looked at apps it said Hootsuite was allowed. So this is what we're doing here. So we want to connect with Instagram and it's recognizing or looking for an Instagram account. So if you haven't, you might find if you've got a personal account, it might find yours as well. So make sure that when you're doing your connection, you're picking your business account and not your personal Instagram account to connect to, although you can connect your personal one if you want. So once you've got the right one, then continue and you will get a message through saying, 
Hootsuite is requesting to access your Instagram information. And I mean, the reason they put this up is just in case someone else is trying to do it and, they, and they're sort of trying to fake your account or something. So you have to authorize that Hootsuite is allowed to access your Instagram account. So then you need to go through the process of allowing Hootsuite to publish to your Instagram account on your behalf and through you. So you'll go through this process and says, let's set up your Instagram business account. You need to set up now and you will need to have, make sure that you've created your Instagram business profile and connected it to a Facebook page before you go through these Hootsuite processes. So you'll have to go through an authentication process to make sure that you're the right person and that you're allowed to connect your Facebook account to your Instagram account to Hootsuite. So you have to go through this process. So select authenticate with Facebook and you'll have to log on to Facebook. And as we mentioned earlier, the way that Facebook works is you, you log on with your personal Facebook account to manage your Facebook organizational account. But don't worry, this process will not allow Instagram to access your personal account. It's just the way that Facebook works. So enter your personal password to log on to Facebook and continue. And what, what it's saying here is that Hootsuite would like to access the profile and post from the Instagram account, which is connected to your Facebook page. So that's your Instagram business account connected to your organization's Facebook page. So what you're doing is giving Instagram permission to publish, create posts, manage comments and everything like that in your Instagram account connected to your Facebook page. So if you're happy with that, click OK. And then you can add a stream in Hootsuite to track your post. So you can see here that this is the Good Exchange's Instagram account and we can see our posts and we can also see posts that we've scheduled in Instagram. So we can schedule posts now in Instagram to appear in Instagram through Hootsuite. If you want to learn how to use Hootsuite from the beginning, we have got a webinar on our website which goes through in a lot more detail how to do this. So we've covered a lot today and we've referred to previous things. If you want to see the webinar recordings that we've got, you can go onto our website and look at all the webinar recordings and watch them at your leisure and also download all the slides. And also if you want to be notified when we've got new recordings and what, one of the things that we do with these webinars is split them up into shorter chunks and we put them on our YouTube channel so you can subscribe to our YouTube channel via the link here and then you'll be notified. So that's the end of the formal webinar. We have got some questions still open. One of them was actually about Hootsuite saying it, they, they, they thought it wasn't a good idea to auto post on different platforms. So what you can do with Hootsuite, if we go back to the slide, which is the picture, you can see in Hootsuite you've got lots of different streams and you can schedule posts and you can either schedule posts all at once or you can schedule them one at a time. So you're right with your comment that hashtags might be different, the number of characters you can have might be different, the people you tag or people's tagging names might be different. So what we tend to do is write a post for one thing and then we, we tag the people for that one through Hootsuite and then we might copy some of it and then create a different post using the same messaging and the same imaging for say on Instagram and Twitter. So we very rarely will use the, use the functionality to create one post and post it to several different social media platforms at once, but we'll use the bones of it yeah. to create different posts. You can also, the great thing about Hootsuite is you can duplicate posts. So if you have a post and you're posting it on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook and then you like it, you can just copy that or duplicate it and post it again. So that's the great thing about Hootsuite. On Hootsuite, when you tag someone and you search for them, say on Facebook, it doesn't necessarily work if you if you then use the same post. No, you yeah. You should tag them separately. So what we generally do is we'll write the main body of the text and we'll have that then going to um, all the different, so Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Then what we'll go and do is go into each post and do the tagging and the hashtagging um, for each of the different social networks. So essentially the main um, 
body, the message is the same, but the tagging and the hashtagging is different. Can you delete comments if you make appropriate? You can set up the commenting that it has to be approved. Yeah. And you can delete them as well. Yes, yeah. we do that. Yeah, so that's something that you can keep an eye on as well. Um, so yeah, you can do that. And the other thing that you can do in Hootsuite, actually, if you haven't been to the webinars, you can see all your comments for all your social media platforms in one place, yeah. which is brilliant. Yeah, You don't have to log into no, all your exactly. social media accounts to see if anyone's commented or sent you a message. You can also, I think it's worth noting, if you get tagged in something, um, you can also remove tags as well. So if your organization's Instagram gets tagged in something, you can remove that. So that's also something that you can do. So thank you very much, thank everyone, you. for attending.